Welcome to our latest adventure. Okay. Today we explore Eden, the eight man race. You want me to leave subtitles on or no? I am darkness. I remember this. I destroy the light and bring the dark. I am super edgy. And the other day when I was cool. in a simulator, I put my name as darkness. <sighs> Maybe some time away from home wasn't the best idea for you. Cat, what are you wearing? We're warriors of darkness. You need to be more edgy. I'll keep the etherical balance for us. Can't have too much darkness at one time. Speaking of aether, did like you really want to about something related to that? Oh yeah, I think we're supposed to meet her over in the Crystal. Is this dies of cringe? Let's head out. No, this Warrior is fine. Darkness. This is fine. Once upon a time, in the Crystarium, we meet with Reen and she tells us of a disturbance in the Aether, a strange concentration of light somewhere to the south. She believes it to originate in the empty, lands once swallowed by the flood. These Let me ask a question real fast. When does this take place? Like, during Shadowbringers? Like, when does this take place? The story of Shadowbringer. Okay, so basically, Emmett is dead at this point. Okay. Did land stretch nine tenths of this world and are incapable of supporting life? This could be the presence of another light warden, and as the Shadowbringer, it's my our uh, our responsibility to smite it. Okay. Green takes us to Amarang to meet up with Thancred and Uriange. After meeting up with our friends, we plan our journey into the wastelands of the empty. We'll be relying on Rin's aether sensing abilities to get in and out of the area before exposing the party. Is it Rin or Rhine? Rin. We'll be relying on Rin's aether sensing abilities to get in and out of the area before exposing the party for too long. Enough time in the empty and our friends would surely become sin eaters. Our friends meeting the scions because the main the main character can't get affected by that, right? Okay, okay, okay. With that in mind, we've opted for a more mechanical mode of transportation, a sky slipper. Apparently, the vehicle was found in the crystal tower and has since been restored to working order. Dad Thangrid drives us out into the empty as Rin helps navigate towards the Aether Source. <sighs> Are we there yet? Dude, is that Cloud's hair, man? Don't people want Cloud? It, like, isn't Cloud's hair hard to get in game? Are we there yet? Okay. After a quick nap in the back seat, we wake to find our target. There over the cliff is the source of the disturbance. Mm. A large, sleeping... What is it? Rin doesn't seem to think it's a Sin Eater. It doesn't fill itself with light. She says this creature is light. Orianger believes it's the original Sin Eater, the one that began the Flood and whom Minfilia vanquished a century ago. A foe of great power and the origin of our struggle on the first deserves a fitting name. Eden. You told oh. me that it's clear that we must put an end to Eden before it wakes and recreates the Wait, so Eden was a light bringer? Oh, so that's so well, that's why you fight Eden. Okay. After the tents have been put up and Thancred returns from his scouting mission, we get to business. Rin makes a point to suggest we move fast on this one before Eden fully awakes. Oh, so she it's snoozing. the light enacted from the okay, flood okay, embodies okay. umbral properties. That is to say that it halts the flow of Aether, causing life to cease over time. Perhaps with the defeat of Eden, we could bring the Aether to flow once more. Ariange surmises that Minfilia must have found a way to silence Eden, but not defeat it. As Minfilia's successor, Rin may still possess a means to exert her will over Eden. The way to defeat Eden is most likely by destroying it from the core, where the most Aether is concentrated. By employing Aethernet shards as beacons, we could trace the ethereal flow to Eden's core, and in doing so, secure a means to teleport to the very heart of the beast. Ariange can fashion a means by which Rin can communicate with Eden, hopefully allowing us to drop its defenses. And perhaps most important of all, if any baddies come our way, the Warriors of Darkness can put them down. Okay, so hold on. So, there was a disturbance... Vereen can sense it, right? So she goes there. She finds out that Eden may be the original Lightbringer, but it's like hibernating, right? Do we know why it's hibernating? Not yet. Oh. Okay. We teleport okay, into so the, the core of Eden only oh. to set off an alarm. We're greeted by what appears to be a version of Eden itself. After a battle and a cutscene that lasts for ages, yeah. we emerge victorious. Taking the teleport back to camp, we let our friends know that it's safe to enter. Okay, okay. So we go in there now and we prove a the point. Now inside the Rin communicates with Eden. Although it's clear that Eden wishes not to be bothered, as everything around us begins to shake. Eden rises up from the land and takes to the air. As it does, Rin gains control of Eden. However, she is unsure yet how to give it commands. Suddenly, an alarm goes off. We have an airborne intruder, and even some within Eden already. 
Ariante and Thancred will deal with those inside, while we head topside to deal with our uninvited guests. Oh, and Rin this is the, uh... The Eden and creates a platform by which we can fight. Oh, this is Void Walker, or whatever the f*** his name is. Okay, our so... Our guest arrives, carried by a winged... Okay, so this is why we're fighting on top of Eden. Okay, so this so this guy's, like, attacking Eden? Trying to get in? ...an eater. Or perhaps our foe is holding this knight hostage. It's hard to... Oh. ...to tell. Okay. But we won't hold back. Man, I Wait, like this fight, how dude. How our enemy can call upon the void? I like this fight, man. I thought this fight was cool. With the Sin Eater destroyed, the knight it was holding drops to the platform, and our friends join us. Our mysterious Dark Knight rises and curses the light. Rina asks who she is, and in their confusion to answer the question, they pass out. Oh, Green shit. senses something off about her aether, but she isn't a Sin Eater. Thancred, being the supporting father figure he is, takes the knight back to camp so that we can try and speak with her again once she wakes. Back in Eden's core, Uriange makes note that the- Shit, okay, who's the third- who's the third boss? Oh, it's Leviathan. The battle okay, we encountered okay. gave way to rifts through which Void This sent was such a good role. raid tier. Rain gets Emmett Selk vibes from her. Though Uriange believes her not to be an Asian, perhaps she's the servant of Zodiac in some way. Mm. And they're talking about the knight, anyway, right? Anyway, while we were fighting off the invaders, Rin made a discovery on how to control Eden. Similar to that of the Flood, the balance in the Empty is attuned to Umbral. This is why the Empty is in a stasis. That said, Eden has the ability to- Wait, 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 wait. This is why the Empty is- Similar to that of the Flood, the balance in the Empty is attuned to Umbral. What's the Flood? The Flood of Light. The balance in the Empty is attuned to Umbral. Okay. So they're both attuned to Umbral. What is Umbral? Wait, Umbral is light. Wait, what? Umbral is yin, astral is... Okay, okay. This is okay. why the empty is okay. in stasis. That said, Eden has the ability to tip the scales back to astral, oh. giving life and balance to the environment again. Okay, hold on, let me see. Oh, so the Umbral's light. This is why okay. the empty is in stasis. That's that said, Eden has the ability to... Okay, said, okay, Eden so that's why we want Eden's help, is to, to make it astral again. and balance to the environment okay. again. To ensure a widespread change, we'd need to revitalize each element okay. back into the world in order. Okay, I understand. Ariange suggests we spawn manifestations of the primals to do just that. And it would be up to our memories of these primals to give shape to their form, so that we may contain them while the element is absorbed. Oh. So Eden can take the overflowing light and turn it into darkness to balance out the astral and the umbral. Okay, but why does it need memories of like Leviathan and Titan and Shiva? Oh, it will be explored. Okay, okay, okay. I was just making sure I didn't miss anything. So which element should we tackle first? Perhaps water, the source of all life? And if we take Eden to the one steep ocean as our summoning ground, we would near okay. guarantee the water element would overpower the battle. So you're telling me that the Leviathan we got? Man, that's not anything like the Leviathan we fought. Let's hope I don't remember Leviathan any harder than it used to be. Faze, what did you do? This is way worse than before. Okay. I was thinking about how I didn't want to deal with two targets like before. Okay. I'm not sure two right. giant heads is better than a head and a tail to fight. It'll be easy. Just don't fall over the edge like you always do. <laughs> I'm going to push you over the edge. After following the Great Sea Serpent, we rejoin our friends in Eden's core. We have to explain... Man, I remember when that fight came out, I hated it. I thought it was boring. But then Eden Verse came out, and then I did the third turn of Eden Verse, and then I loved Leviathan. <laughs> to Rin, after following the Great Sea Serpent, we rejoin our friends in Eden's core. We have to explain to Rin how primals in our memories are much different than those we've experienced on the Source. For on the Source, the Beast Tribes had a religious tie to the primals, whereas our encounters had always been of conflict. Oddities like the Two-Headed Beast are bound to happen again. To see if our plan is working, we head back to camp in the Empty. Except, the Empty isn't so empty anymore. Oh. Where once was a bear Now we got a water now crystal? Now a crystal from Ooh. which water flows. A sure okay, sign that okay, we're on the okay, right path. Okay. On to the next element. So it's not so Actually, empty anymore. All right. So we can rejuvenate the soil and pave the way for further life. Oh, and while we're thinking about it, how's the night? Thancred assures us. Oh, so is the empty like void of all elements besides light? Oh, okay. But she's okay, fine, okay. just still sleeping. Okay. He removed her helmet to see what we're dealing with and says she appears to be a normal girl, not much older than Reen. Thancred plans to stay with her in case. Oh, wait a minute. Yo, is the girl Gaia? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. To the mountains east of Norbrun. 
Okay. Our earth aspected primal of choice is Titan, okay, Lord okay, of Crags. Okay. Hey, that looks pretty close, right? Oh, I man. did good. I don't know. This right here is the best Savage turn ever made. Oh, he looks like a younger, more agile Titan. What are those? See right here? This is Titan Minimum. Later, he turns into Titan Maximum. Head. Look, this whole summoning thing isn't as easy as it looks. You try next time. After some running around, we lay low the Underdweller. <laughs> as we return to camp, we find the land healing. Dude, dude, the fact that he can run you over in a car is just absolutely phenomenal. Though it is clear now that the changes are only present in the area around the crystal. Perhaps the localized phenomenon oh, is the result of the intersection okay. of ethereal currents. He'll strive. Thank you for the in reset. layman terms, it should spread soon enough. We've been in the empty for a while now, and it appears to be taking a toll on Reen, so we decide to head back to the Crystarium for a bit to recover. Okay. On our journey back, Reen takes us aside in Amarang. She tells us how when she first sensed the disturbance in the empty, she was scared of what we'd find. But she knows now that... Okay, this is kind of cool so far. She also thinks back to the girl that we've been helping recover. Her last words were, Why am I here? What is happening? She just wants to talk to her, to learn from her. Mm -hmm. Every so-called villain has their side of the story. And we'd be remiss to not hear hers out. We just have to wait for her to wake. Meanwhile, Ariange and Think would remain in the empty. Ariange has uncovered information about our sleeping friend. Wait, why can they stay in the empty? I thought the Scions couldn't stay in the empty. Or is it because there's two crystals there now? It's like more manageable. Okay. The Oracle of Darkness. After some time to recoup from the empty, we get word that our sleeping girl is awake. She claims her name is Gaia and is a Oh, of the okay, Ulmer, okay. Yet, oddly enough, does not remember any of the events pertaining to Eden. As we talk, Gaia and Thancred return to Amarang. They've been asking around in Yulmore, looking for information about who Gaia might have been, but came short on any useful details. Gaia is convinced that the only way to learn more is to stay with us and uncover Bro, is he carrying... Dude, Gaia is, is this luggage, bro? convinced that the only way to learn more is to stay with us and uncover her locked away memories. We sit down with Gaia and tell her of the events on Eden, which she does not recall. She doesn't have much to say herself, other than that she seems Thank you to for the recognize reason. us, but has no idea from where. As she talks months, with us, though, back, her memory becomes less hazy. She explains how she feels like there's someone else within her, a voice in her head. The voice tells Gaia to use its power for some sort of magic that allows her to tear open the fabric between realities. The similarities of how Minfilia speaks to Reen are all too obvious. Perhaps this voice wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Allows her to there is a voice that tells Gaia to use its power. Oh, now, I, now I've done the Eden raids, so that voice is like, that voice is an Asian, right? It is an Asian. okay. Tear okay, open okay, the okay. fabric between realities. Okay. The similarities of how Minfilia speaks to Reen are all too obvious. Perhaps this voice inside Gaia's head is what helped her resist Fothry's influence, and what made her jump into battle when Eden arose. If Orianger is correct, and she is the Oracle of Darkness, then we have to be very careful going forward. Gaia has so it's already suspected that she's the Oracle of Darkness. Had enough idle chit chat, so we decide to take off for Eden once again. As we chase after her, we find her face to face with a bug. Without much hesitation, she casts a spell on the bug, which appears to have done nothing to it. As the bug charges at Gaia, a clock ticks, causing a delayed magic burst on the creature, destroying it in a... Oh, wow. That's a raid mechanic. ...single explosion. That seems all too familiar. Gaia claims to have had this power since she was a child, but the spells have always been delayed and only come when the voice in her head asks her to use them. Hmm. Is it too late to leave her behind? Okay. No, Rin won't have it. We shouldn't lock someone up for the threat that they can't control. What good would that do for this plot? We should help them. I mean, that's kind of cool. I never together. knew that. Okay. Rin plans to face the dangers that lie ahead in Eden with Gaia at our side. Maybe in doing so, we can learn more of Gaia's origin. Hard to argue with that. With a focus party, we head back to the empty. As Gaia stares out at Eden, she can't help but feel like it's only a matter of time before she learns of who she really is. She wonders if knowing her true self is a good thing. One thing is for certain. Though she may push everyone away, Reen shows her support for Gaia. Inside Eden, we look to continue our work. Ariange suggests okay, we pick so an Okay, so uh, this is Rama. And what better than lightning? Yeah, this is Rama. Oh boy, that means okay. Ramu. Half man, half beard, and another part half beard for good measure. Yeah. 
You are way worse at this than I was. Why is he half horse? Uh, I may have been briefly thinking about the mounts I need to collect after this. Ramu is supposed to be an old guy that doesn't move. Something tells me this guy is gonna- Dude, it's Rama. This is not like a cow bottom half, so it can't be Ramu. It's Rama. Gonna be dashing everywhere. Yeah, this may be harder than it looks. Easier to kill these things than remake them. After defeating this centaur of a primal, we return yeah, to the crystal outside Eden. It now glows purple, indicating our change has been made. Yet the change is subtle. Thancred senses a humidity in the air, much like before. Dude, rain, you know what? Nothing else. Is you know what primal I really liked that they like never brought back was Kajada. I always thought Kajada was so cool, man. He was this like tri-element bull. Dude, he's badass, man. It's visible. Guy is not amused by how little our progress has to show for it. Perhaps by enacting the winds of change, we may stir the heavens. If we're looking to make it rain, we'd need two more elements. Fire, which would evaporate the water into the clouds, and wind, oh, which would move and cool Wait, the so that's why we the fight form. them both at the same Very time? Very bored of our science lesson, Gaia suggests that we just draw them both out together. Damn, okay. Extremely dangerous, yet holds some merit. The elemental wheel dictates that wind and fire are both astral energy. Oh, I have this in my house, bro! <gasps> I didn't know this was relevant, dude. I thought this was just a summoning circle. <gasps> I have this in my house. All right, let's look. Okay, hold on. So hold on. What are they saying in the video here? The elemental wheel dictates that wind and fire are both astral energies. Oh, wait, astral. Wait, here's the tree. That's a wise tree in the middle. Okay, I get it. And from that, they share a connection which puts each other in check. Oh. Okay. Rama, Ifrit, Titan, Shiva, Leviathan, Garuda. Summoning both may help stabilize not only the astral umbral balance, but also keep each from becoming unstable. While we work out the details, Gaia steps away. Okay. Rena's clearly distracted, so we cheer her up to see what's bothering her. She's just surprised at how Gaia seems so distant to her. Reen hardly knows anyone her own age, and she's been nice to Gaia ever since they met. Damn. Yet Gaia seems to care not for anyone other than herself. Ariane J and Thancred tell her that she should still continue to reach out to Gaia. Persistence is key. In time, Gaia will come around and open up to her, and perhaps together they can help shape a brighter future for the first. Reen decides to go and talk to Gaia. We act totally natural and listen in from a distance. Okay. A moment of courage, Reen asks Gaia to have coffee biscuits with her. Sadly, Gaia immediately turns her down. Damn, right Gaia's kind of a bitch. She doesn't do what other people do. She does what she wants. Gaia tells Reen that she's not her friend. Big sad. Damn. We'll sweep it under the rug for now. We have two primals to focus on. Aboard Eden, we make plans for Ashfall, where we will summon both Garuda and Ifrit. Okay. Hey, second time's the charm for me, too. They're pretty close to before, I think. I'm still nervous. We've never had to fight both of them at once before. Man, they look cool. Yeah, we fought Ultima, who ate all of them for breakfast. How hard can this be? Uh, we might want to rethink that. What's this, Rakshasha? Much. Yeah. Back at camp, the crystal glows Ooh, green and red. Not okay, only that, okay. but it begins to rain in the empty. While we celebrate, Gaia screams out at Eden. Why can't she remember who she is? Suddenly, the voice in her head yells back. It still hungers. It wants Gaia to unleash her full power. Reclaim your memories. Fulfill your destiny. Rings in her head. Rin asks her if she's okay, but Gaia screams at her to get away from her. Damn. Hachi. Okay. With nothing left but okay, the okay. element of ice to return to the empty, we head back to Eden. In theory, this would return the empty back to its state before the flood or at least within a decade or two. As the Oracle of Light, Reen's power can only work so fast. These words seem to bother Gaia as she throws a fit in front of us. So this is the Oracle of Darkness, bringer of misery and chaos? She belittles herself and casts doubt on our willingness to help her. Dude, she's a bitch! And she goes topside to get some air. We follow her atop Eden to see what she's up to, but we're too late. Gaia begins to remember, and in that moment, the darkness within her shoots out into the air. An icon of darkness appears that draws forth Sin Eaters. Like oh, loft. God. We grab Gaia and teleport back inside Eden before the birds can get us. Change the, the plan. birds. The ice can wait. We have a new boss to kill. 
so many of them. Okay. But nothing we can't handle. We play a game of red light, blue light, and stop just in time before being Man, this turn was such like such a disappointment. For those of you that don't know, this this turn went under some like last minute development changes that ended up being really really bad. Yeah, so it went from being really difficult to like way too easy. Killed. This is no children's game. After we deal with the darkness, we return to our friends inside Eden. During our time away, Gaia has been lost in her thoughts, unconscious. She's trapped inside her own head with no one to talk to, not even the voice of darkness. Ironic how all she ever wanted was peace and quiet, and now that she has it, she just wants someone to talk to. Alone and without her memories, she willingly slips into the darkness of her mind. She will suffer no more. But Reen won't have it. She calls out to Gaia and reminds her of the coffee biscuits they were supposed to go get. Oh, Hearing Reen's shit. voice, okay. Gaia returns to consciousness. And for the first Did they ever time, get coffee biscuits? She smiles. Gaia tells us how when the fairy they do? Her head, okay, okay. was speaking with her in a dream, a stream of memories rushed through her mind. It's like seeing visions of I another mean, life she lived, but through someone else's eyes. I like eyes. coffee biscuits. Yeah, that sounds totally normal. Gaia assures us we can talk more later, but first we should get back to business. We have yet to release the element of ice into the empty, and should head to the great glacier to the north. There we can summon Shiva. However, Rin has another idea to add. She'd like to be the vessel to Shiva, mm. like Ysail was. Being still and passive in nature, ice is the element most aligned with light, so Rin would need to get close to the action to draw it out. Thancred is not about to stand by and watch as we beat up Rin. If by harnessing the power of ice, Rin could hope to teach Eden to take care of the empty long after we finish our work. In this way, Rin would free herself from having to stay and control Eden. A leap of faith for sure, mm. but it's faith that got us this far. Faith in our friends, and in our abilities. As we enter okay, so I'm going to ask a question. Does Shiva always possess someone? Why does Shiva always possess someone? She's a human primal. Some primals need to possess a mortal. Okay, okay, okay. I was just curious. The arena of ice. Reen so it could technically be anybody, right? Like it didn't have to be Reen? Okay. The pose you sailed did when calling forth Shiva. In a blast of ice, Shiva is summoned and immediately takes control of Reen. Unable to fight against it, we battle against our friend and foe. After Rin inappropriately flashes us a few oh times. Oh my and god. Of course, look away. Yeah, look we away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Most glad they thought, put that in there. Glad they put that in there. Because there's a bunch of perverts. See, look, we got perverts in chat right now looking, looking. One guy that passed the mechanic, not looking at Booba. Over and cap we defeat her shield form. Or so we thought. In a flash of white, she freezes over and captures us in ice. Unable to move, she begins to expel a huge force of light. From a void gate, Gaia, the Oracle of Darkness, jumps through carrying her hammer. She screams for the release of her friend and begins to chip away at the ice. Oh shit, Once okay, free, I remember we join this. her in stopping Rin from releasing her light. Gaia's magic is able to reverse the summoning effect and return Rin to normal before anything drastic happens. Okay. With everyone safe, Rin and Gaia find comfort in each other's company, talking about how the never melt ice they found would make a great necklace. Yeah, that that's fine. I'm I'm good. Thanks for asking. Back at camp, we find a pleasant surprise. Life is returning to the empty. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, all right. With life slowly returning to the empty in hopes that it'll spread, Reen thinks now is a good time to take a break. And to make things better, Gaia decides to stay with Reen and us. It would seem the ice is thawing around Gaia, too. Ooh, ooh. After some personal time away from the whole Eden crew, we get word that Arianje would like to I hope we get a hammer tank. I'm going to make it. With Thancred, I Rin, love and hammers and games. Too, Ariante explains how Thancred and himself plan to leave the first. This day was always known to come, but now with the Eden Project in motion, they see this as a great time to leave the project in our hands. Though Rin is sad to see her friends go, she still has us and Gaia to keep her company. Heartfelt goodbyes are shared as we set off to see our friends back to oh, the Oh, they leave? Mid-raid? After helping what the our heck? scions get back to the source, we decide to check back in on the first. Rin and Gaia have been having fun. They enjoyed their coffee biscuit date and made a necklace out of the ice crystal they found. When we find them, they were just about to go check out the empty, which sounds great. We'll join. Gaia drives mm. us out to the campsite, but when we get there, we see regression in the environment. The crystal reflects a shade of yellow, indicating the overwhelming presence of light. 
This may be from when Rin nearly exploded light energy while impersonating Shiva. A voice rings out in Gaia's head, telling her to restore the darkness to it. Gaia suggests that due to the overabundance... Okay, I have a question. Don't we want darkness? If the plane is overflowing with light, don't we want darkness? Like, wouldn't, like why wouldn't Gaia just unleash the darkness? Or is it like too much darkness? Abundance of light in the empty, we should balance it out by similarly defeating summons of darkness. Okay. The thing is, is there isn't exactly a primal of darkness. We need to think of something else. Maybe the cloud of darkness from when we... Oh. Okay, so now we're trying to release a little bit of darkness energy. That makes sense. Cloud of darkness. Countered okay. her during okay. our exploits yeah, yeah, yeah. the crystal tower. Yeah. As for the venue, we'll just have Rin hold off the light in the area, and Gaia draw out the darkness. And when we're all done, we can get treats at the festival at the Crystarium. Okay. I gotta tell you. Didn't she used to be more green? I may this have version is uh, the last time we much better. Her, she was mad ugly. Hmm, I see. After killing the cloud of darkness, we okay. return to camp to see if any changes occurred. Nothing out of the ordinary appears to be different at first. But then, the crystal shines the colors of a rainbow. Something has happened, but we're not sure what. Well, what element is that? Gaia is suspicious. Something is off. She calls out to Eden saying that someone has been hiding within Eden this whole time. Oh. And with that, a dark shadow forms in the air, revealing to us Mitron, servant of Zodiac, an Asian. Yeah, it's the Asian <sighs> that, like, talks to... Apparently, Mitron is the voice yeah, that was speaking okay. to Gaia all her life. Okay. And thanks to us dispelling some of the light in the area, he's almost free of his prison. Mitron is Eden, an Asian turned Sin Eater, and the cause of the Flood. So Eden was Mitron, an Asian. In typical okay. villain fashion, regales us with his tale. Long ago, the thirteenth shard was flooded by darkness, left to the void. As with all imbalances, the effect ripples to the other shards. The first felt the greatest effect, being made susceptible to the influence of light. Now losing the first to the void would be of no use to the Asians, so Mitron and the others were sent to prevent the flood of light. Emmett Selk, however, conceived of a plan to trigger the rejoining of the shard by using the very light that was trying to destroy the first. It was Ardbert and his companions that first defeated the Asians, and in doing so, doomed the first to the light. Wait, okay, Ardbert is the, uh, yeah, he's the warrior guy, right? So, but I thought he died in that battle. Was it another battle? Uh, wait, he doesn't die until he leaves the first? He unalived himself and his friends to travel to the source during Heaven's Ward. Okay, I don't know anything about Heaven's Ward. Okay. Gassians, and in doing so, doomed the first to the light. While the other wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, wait. It was Ardbert and his companions that first defeated the Asians, and in doing so, doomed the first to the light. So Ardbert fought in itself, yes or no? No, okay, 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 hold on, hold, hold on, okay, I'm gathering information, hold on. These Asians were not Emmett Silk, they were definitely, or they were other Asians, right? Kind of similar to how Laha Bread, like, did his thing in the source, okay? All right, hold on, hold on, going slow, I'm not smart. So when they defeated the Asians, why did they doom the first to the light? Was it because the Asians were the balance of darkness? Oh, so they were like a necessary evil. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, I think I got it, I think I got it. Okay, so, okay, now you got Ardbert and the boys, Asians. So they fight. Okay, so right now it's 50-50. But then once Ardbert and the boys kill the Asians. It is now 100% light. Here, I'm just going to put it here, but it's 100%. Okay, so now it's 100% light. So then they're like, we need to get rid of some light, but we are light, so we need to go. So then they go to the first. I mean, not the first, but the source. They made a deal with Themis to save the first. Oh, they were lied to. Okay, so I haven't got to that part. Okay, I haven't got to that part. Okay, okay, okay. I first defeated the Asians, and in doing so, doomed the first to the light. Okay. While the other Asian soul would be reborn with a new body, Ardbert had stricken Mitron with a blade of purest light. 
Even an Asian cannot recover from that. Oh, As shit. his soul was twisted into ruin, Mitron unleashed the light burgeoning within him, spreading it to every corner of the world. What? Wait, so Ardbert hit this guy so hard, he turned him into a light warden? This would come to be known as the Flood. <laughs> so Ardbert is so strong that he caused the first to basically be over flooded with light and face cataclysm. So he's a rank one. Minfilia would come to stop the flood by ceasing it from spreading, and in doing so, she restored to Mitron a sliver of his consciousness. Oh, and Minfilia, before she died or whatever, she was stopping an unconscious Mitron from fully spreading the flood. Okay, okay. Enough to whisper as he lay dormant in the wake of okay. what we now call the Empty. His defeated body is that of Eden. As to not further destroy the balance of Aether and potentially destroy the Shard, Emmett Selk never came back from Etron. The only other person that can save him is Gaia. She need only... Why did Emmett not come back from Etron? He just simply didn't give a shit because his sole purpose was to reunite the the Shards and Metron being alive or not did not matter. Like, basically, everything that he wanted Metron to do, he already did, so he doesn't give a anymore okay. only remember her duty remember mitron as for the here and now mitron can influence control over gaia as seen when she first attacked eden he can also project his i can see why people like him he's an anti-hero i can see why people like him he has some similarities to virgil his image outside the ship which is why we're able to talk monologue over if we wish to find out more mitron invites us inside eden's core well, we're not going to get anywhere in restoring the empty with an assy and eating all the dark energy we produce. Rin recalls the words of Thancred and Ariange and is reminded. Assy and eating, those two words next to each other, they're, it's like kind of funny to me. Reminded not to rush in and take time to think of a plan. But Gaia doesn't remember who Thancred and Ariange are. This memory thing is starting to become a problem again. So she, she still doesn't to remember. Tell Gaia of Thancred and Ariange in hopes that she'll begin to remember, or at the very least, put her at ease for a while. After okay. some chit-chat, we set our eyes again on the Asian problem and head to Eden's core to confront Mitron. Okay, so this Mitron right now, is he, like, corporeal? Or is he a ghost? Because basically, Eden, we're like, it's, it's kind of creepy, but we're like inside of Eden's dead body, like inside of Eden's husk. Now, I understand that he is Eden, but we're inside of Eden. He offers to show us a glimpse of the past, that we might learn some answers there. He means to conjure the Shadow Keeper, Nemesis of Ardbert, and his fellow Ooh, warriors of light. Okay. To do so, he needs Gaia, but she is her own self now, or again, however that works. And she will not be used by an Asian. Jealous that Gaia chose Reen and us over himself, Mitron snatches Gaia and teleports her into the shadows. Oh shit. He plans to reveal Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's salty. While we help in defeating the summons of dark. He's salty about that? So basically he's been talking to her, so he thought that there was some bond. Mitron snatches Gaia and teleports her into the shadows. He plans to reveal to her her true identity while we help in defeating the summons of darkness. With that, okay. he teleports us out of Eden. The doggo has a sword, cat! It has a sword! You have a sword too! Maybe you can teach this doggo a trick or two. Dude, I hated that fight. After following in Ardbert's footsteps and defeating the Shadow Keeper, we return to Eden's core. There we find Gaia. Actually, apparently actually the fight wasn't too bad. I just didn't like the orb mechanic. Besides that, the fight was the the fight was fine. I just didn't like the orb mechanic. But I didn't like how one party member could give the whole other party member a damage down for their one mistake. I don't like mechanics like that. Like you should punish the person, not the whole party. Maybe you can teach this doggo a trick or two. After following in Ardbert's footsteps and defeating the Shadow Keeper, we return to Eden's core. There we find Gaia. She apparently watched the fight and has seen this before, some hundred years ago. Mitron enters the core and claims that it was Gaia and himself that created the Shadow Keeper. Oh. Mitron wishes for Gaia to reclaim her lost identity and erase the worthless memories she's made with us. But these memories are not worthless. Her new life is her own and she will not part with it. 
Mitran is shocked that Gaia still resists, wondering how things would have been different if he too had died with her, had he too been reborn. Wait, Alas, died with her? Wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mitran is her new life is her own, and she will not part with it. Mitran is shocked that Gaia still resists, wondering how things would have been different if he too had died with her. Wait, so she died? We don't know how she died though yet, do we? He had been two reborn, the last one they fought as one against... Oh, so she fought against... She fought Ardbert? Oh. Had he too been reborn? Alas, when they fought as one against Ardbert, joined in both body and soul, Ardbert tore the bond between them with his final blow. And with a grimace, Mitra knows his next move. Should they Dude, Ardbert's badass. Okay. Be rejoined once more. His memories would unlock Gaia's memories. With a wave of his hand, Mitran reveals an Asian insignia across Gaia's face. She loses memory of Reen before merging with Mitran and forming Asian Prime. And they remember, together. Gaia was a reborn Asian all along, and hers was the seat of Logrith. Oh. Okay, okay. We suddenly receive a vision from the Echo of Mitran and Gaia as their previous selves. They served together on the Convocation of the Fourteen. We learned Gaia was previously given the assignment Elidibus would come to take, and Mitron was her protector. The two had an undeniable bond and promised to never separate. So before okay. us is the culmination of the power held by two members of the Convocation. Seems oddly familiar. Reen just wants her friend back, regardless of if she's an Asian or not. Asian Prime won't have it, and shrouds Reen in dark magic. Visions of doubt and fear cloud her mind. Highlander? Similar to when focusing on a What's target wrong with summonings we did earlier. I know this place. It's the jail in your mind. Oh, this is thankful. Without much of a choice, we must face off against Reen's agony by defeating the twisted manifestation of her memories. We face off against a version of Thancred and Ranji in the jails of Yulmore. Back in Eden's core, we face off to Asian Prime once more. Wait, hold on, sorry. Guys, hold on. Give me one sec, man. I, I, dude, I gotta pee. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, man. Why do we face Thancred? Reen just wants her friend back, regardless of if she's an Asian or not. Asian Prime won't have it, and shrouds Reen in dark magic. Visions of doubt and fear cloud her mind, similar to when focusing on a target for the summonings we did earlier. Oh, so Thancred saved her, right? Because that the Asian did some f***ed up shit to her, and now she's all like confused. So she probably just like thought of her the latest protector that she had, maybe. So that's why she happened to think of him. It's Thancred and Ranji combined. Without much of a choice, we must face off against Reen's agony by defeating the twisted manifestation of her memories. We face off against a version of Thancred and Ranji in the jails of Yulmor. Okay. Back in Eden's core, we face off to Asian Prime once more. Our foe cannot comprehend how we overcame our fears while they had succumbed to theirs long ago during the final days. While Asian Prime is baffled, Gaia whispers to us, Now's our chance. Memories of Rin and Gaia fill the room and are shattered in an instant. Oh, the this explains door, the Asian next Prime fight. Asian fuses with Eden, creating one last final horror to face. Okay. Oh, and that's why it's called Eden's, Eden's Promise. Promise. Channels yeah. the power of Leviathan. Titan, okay. Ramu, Garuda, Ifrit, and Shiva to become the Avatar, bender of all elements. Okay, okay, okay. We must protect Gaia's memories of Reen. It's the only thing preventing us from losing her altogether. Eden will become a utopia. I told you it would make a great. Oh, and that's why there's so many memories. Okay, okay, okay. After defeating Eden, Gaia is returned to us and we are transported back to camp. Gaia is unconscious, but that doesn't stop Reen from reaching out to her. Okay. Reen won't give up on her friend. Gaia is again in her own mind in absolute darkness. Except this time, Mitron's image appears and Gaia smiles. In his death, he is freed from Eden and able to be reborn. Perhaps one day he'll meet Gaia again. 
As Mitron fades away, Gaia says farewell to not the protector, but to her old friend, Artemis. After a long, long walk, she ends up laying down and looking at her ice crystal necklace. The necklace brings back memories of Reen. With the remembrance of her friend, Reen cuts through Gaia's black hole of a brain with Thancred's gunblade and rescues Gaia from her depression. Gaia wakes up to Reen in the flourished lands of the Empty, now a utopia. Oh the shit! The neutron out of the picture, the aether that Eden had absorbed is released and is able to spread more freely. Wait, I thought she died! <laughs> Where's Graha when you well, need him? While Eden spreads life throughout the Empty, our friends from the settlement at the Crystarium will keep an eye on it. And get this, they claim that the investigators in Yulmore have finally found the true identity of Gaia. But this was another life, so to speak. Gaia doesn't wish to know of her past. She knows of Mitron, that she is an Asian reborn, and of her friends. And that's enough. To her, the name Gaia symbolizes hope. She is, and will always be Gaia to her friends. And that's enough. And with that, Gaia reminds Rin of the festivals in the Crystarium, and off they go. Hey, Rin, Gaia, can I come? Don't, don't third wheel me. We were gonna get ice cream. Ooh, I'd like some sea salt ice cream for me, please. <sighs> Looks like they're heading out without us. Let's go get some ice cream on our own at the Wandering Stairs. It's always the Asians. <laughs> they're everywhere, like weeds. We're gonna assume all future unknown enemies are secretly Asians. It's always Organization 13. I think there are 14 members of the convict. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, that's just the normal mode. So then what happened in Savage? Why did we fight her in Savage? Oh, Savage isn't canon. Okay, 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 no, that's fine, that's fine. So you could say that, like, the Savage version might be if she remembered, like, who she was and everything. Oh... Okay, so then what could the ultimate be like? The ultimate is futures rewritten. Yo, maybe it's going to be some stuff where Gaia remembers, but Reen just says you and goes with Gaia. Maybe there's another Asian or, or something that's like, I don't know, mind controlling them or, or some shit. And maybe they merge. They merge into like a light dark bringer warden thing. It has to be something like that. Like, okay, we're obviously going to fight Gaia, right? Who else are we going to fight? We have to fight Gaia. We have to fight Eden Promise. We probably have to fight Rhine, which may look like Shiva. I don't think we're going to fight the... I mean, maybe. We might fight the Primals. But I don't think so. We'll probably fight Mitron. Okay, that's interesting. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Actually. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, Toki, thank you many. for the resub. Welcome back, man. Gas with the resub. No ass. Thank you as well. well. Something with cool black edgy outfits and swords. Mm. Oh, maybe something post-apocalyptic with robots. Okay, okay, okay. Have you heard the latest rumor out of Komra? The dwarves had the strangest find, though actual details as to what the find actually is have yet to emerge. From what I understand, though, the ruins are filled with all kinds of machina. Sounds like our next adventure is near. Be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe down below. That was a good video. What did you enjoy or not enjoy about the That was a good video. I enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below. I enjoyed Thanks the video. Now I'm thinking about the ultimate, man.